Hello and welcome to film 2201, The Art of Adaptation. And in today's lecture, we're going to talk about political aspects of film adaptations. Why certain books should be adapted into screen at a certain period of time. This week, we're going to watch The Third Man by Graham Greene. In this slide, you see the poster of The Quiet American, another Graham Greene adaptation. This movie uh, is about uh, America's intervention in Vietnam, and it's interesting that the release of this film was in 2002, I think, right after the U.S. invasion of Iraq. In this course, we have been discussing different types and different theories of adaptations. However, all these types of adaptations should be understood in terms of their political and cultural context. Knowing that image is always political in itself, I think the process of adapting any famous literary works into the screen is always a political act. Obviously, when we want to talk about the political aspects of film adaptations, first we need to look for political motifs in any adaptation. Moreover, we need to understand the dominant ideology of the time that the book was written and at the time and the place that the book is adapted into the screen. Hence, the choice of what to be dismissed and what part of the book should be kept is also a political choice. For example, during the Depression era, Hollywood studios started to adapt number of Victorian British novel, such as those of Charles Dickens. A novel that is focused on class issues uh, would be a suitable topic to be adapted into a Hollywood movie. For example, David Copperfield by Charles Dickens was adapted by MGM in 1935. I remember. You're going to London to work. To work. To work. David Copperfield as a text has a cultural value. It's prestigious. It's going to attract the middle class. But it also had messages for desperate American people during the Depression era. More than two million people in plain states, including the farmers, moved to the major cities during the Depression era to find jobs. Many families had to change their lifestyle during the Depression era. And a movie based on a prestigious novel like, like David Copperfield was there to justify that. Sometimes this act of politicization of narration recreate the original novel in very different ways. For example, in 1972, Cervantes' novel known as Don Quixote was adapted by a Mexican director. This adaptation has a resonance with um, revolutionary discourses of Mexico at that time. For example, Sancho Panza in that film becomes a means for satirizing legal discourses in a highly political platform. Sometimes by using these prestigious texts, filmmakers can escape censorship imposed. For example, in Japan, after the World War II, filmmakers were not allowed to criticize American troops and also make movies about the nuclear catastrophe. Filmmaker Akira Kurosawa used Macbeth William Shakespeare famous play that was taking place in medieval time to, to correspond to the nuclear catastrophe and the moral confusion in Japanese society at that time. However, Roman Polanski used Macbeth for a different reason. Polanski claims that his adaptation of Macbeth is based on his childhood experiences in Nazis concentration camp. For example, look at the next short scene that I chose from Macbeth. 
how what is happening in this medieval ceremony is similar to Nazi ceremony saying Heil Hitler when um, drinking in this particular scene. I drink to the general joy of the whole table and to our dear friend Banquo, whom we miss. Would he were here. Banquo! Banquo. Now, good digestion, weight on appetite, and health on both. May it please your highness, sit. Please, it's your highness to grace us with your royal company. Polanski views this tragedy as a tale of free will, not destiny. It changes certain behavioral elements of the witches, for example, and the female characters to talk about the idea of power, what he thinks of uh, the events of his childhood during the, the Second World War. Also, the movie is becoming a commentary on images coming out of Vietnam War or civil rights movements in the United States. The Bridge Over the River Kwai is a novel by a French novelist, Pierre Boulet, and it's been translated in English in 1954. It is about uh, British prisoners of war during the World War II and their heroic act to sabotage the bridge. Many critics, however, believe that the film has been Americanized to a great degree and has pro-war tendencies. So despite the original novel's British influence and its historical setting, that is the Second World War, the movie is really about the American situation during the Cold War. In a way, this war story has been politicized by the filmmaker to become an ideological endorsement of Cold War policies and creation of NATO. <laughs> When we want to talk about the political relationship between a film adaptation and its source, we also need to consider their critical receptions. How films such as The Bridge on the River Kauai or The Quiet American were perceived by people at the time of their release and even in different countries. The Bridge of River Kauai was perceived controversially in West Germany and East Germany. It was being seen as justifications of West Germany's joining NATO. Graham Greene was a British writer born in 1904. Cinema had an important role in Greene's life and when he was young he was going uh, to movie theaters often and for that reason the new medium had an influence um, on his works and for that reason maybe um, his novels are easily adaptable to cinematic form. Green was a political writer. He claimed that he was not a politician and he was just a writer. His books had political ideas and themes, but he was not trying to provoke any changes. And for that reason, the geographical range of his political themes in his novels are very broad and sometimes contradictory. His books are about how world politics have direct impacts on people's daily life. So the reading assigned for this week by Anne-Marie Schultz discusses the importance of the third man in relationship with the Cold War. The third man won the Grand Prix Award uh, in Cannes at that year. She argues that the film undermines the Cold War politics that situated the major dilemma of the mid 20th century in both East and West, where the world couldn't see the invisible third party, the third man. 
and if there is a chance for internationalist alternative to the polar patriotism.